All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be checking out the tropics right now because the tropics are absolutely blowing up. There's a three-headed monster out there because we have three different tropical cyclones that are going to be potentially developing over the next few days. Anyways, before I get into the video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather related content. I would also ask that you check out our winter forecast, our third winter forecast. We updated a lot of things in that video. We uploaded that yesterday. That is going to be on the top right corner of your screen and you can check that out today. A lot of people love that one. Uh, I think we brought some valuable information in that video. So I highly recommend you check that out if you haven't already. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know, do you think any of these will develop? And if so, which ones do you think will develop into tropical cyclones? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and we're taking a look at that five day graphical tropical weather outlook and it looks absolutely crazy. As you can see, uh, we have that one down there in the Caribbean, the Southern Caribbean that is, heading towards Central America. We have one in the middle there, kind of heading towards Bermuda. And then we have one there in our MDR or main development region heading away from Africa and kind of following that middle one's track. As you can see, it's kind of heading towards the same regions. We also have post tropical cyclone Henry. That one is expected to die out, you know, fully very, very soon. It, it for the most part already has, but that is our five day graphical tropical weather outlook looking a little crazy. Let's just go one by one and take a look at these percentages and all things included. Uh, this is from the 2 a.m. update, by the way. But here is our one in the Southern Caribbean. We're going to be working our way from west to east. We have a 60% chance of development here with this tropical cyclone over the next five days. Now, here is our next one. We have a 50% chance with this one in the middle of the Atlantic over the next five days. And then the one heading out of our main development region. We have a 40% chance of tropical cyclone development over the next five days. So you see 60, 50, 40. There's a 10% difference between each one. Uh, most likely in the west, least likely in the east, but the ones in the east there near Africa have the highest chance because they have more time to develop. It might even be beyond this five-day period where they could develop, so those ones have the much more higher chance of those chances coming up. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at that probability of tropical depression over the next three days. And as you can see <clears throat> there over the one in the southern Caribbean, we have about a 60 to 70 percent chance of development according to our European model. And the one in the main development region we have about a 50 to 60 percent chance and then the one in the middle has the highest chance according to this one a 90 to 100 percent chance of development up there. Now what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on we're going to move on kind of to uh, the August 29th to September 1st time frame on this tropical depression one but we're going to move on to the tropical storm probability where one might hit the United States actually, and a probability of hurricane as well, where the one might be one out there as well. Then we're gonna move on to spaghetti model guidance, sea surface temperatures, intensity guidance, and even Saharan dust in a little bit. All right, now here we are taking a look at that probability of tropical depression again. This, this is again for the August 29th through September 1st time frame. this time though. We can see there is one that Southern uh, kind of southern Caribbean one ends up there kind of offshore of Mexico and Texas. There's a 60 to 70 percent chance of tropical depression in that area according to this model on days 5 through 8 which again is August 29th through September 1st. Uh, we also have still a 60 to 70 or sorry you know what that's a 70 to 80 percent chance of development there in the middle of the Atlantic and then we have another storm heading off of our main development region by this time frame giving us an 80 to 90 percent chance of tropical depression for that region. So this is gonna be just a continuing um, kind of just storm factory there in our main development region in our offshore of Africa as well. That's very typical this time of year. We're reaching the peak hurricane season, but it's just absolutely exploding right now as we speak. Here's the probability of tropical storm for days four through seven. This is August 28th through August 31st. And we have a 40 to 50% chance of tropical storm status offshore of Texas which if this model is correct, which sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, we're going to need to watch that closely, obviously, as that's a big U.S. threat. Uh, we have also a 60 to 70 percent chance of tropical storm status with that one in the middle of the Atlantic. And then we have a new one offshore of Africa. That's going to give us a 20 to 30 percent chance of tropical storm status. So all of these do have a chance of becoming a tropical storm, which is obviously pretty interesting as we reach this most active time in the hurricane season. We also, in that one in the middle of the Atlantic, have a 
10 to 20 percent chance of hurricane status there which is also very interesting now only two of these are like officially invests so that's all we're going to be able to watch on the spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance that's going to be the one in the middle of the atlantic and then the one offshore of africa the one in the southern caribbean does not have any of that guidance yet but if we get any updates with that we're going to be bringing that to you guys 100 so be on the watch out for that now here is the one in the middle of the Atlantic, the spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, there is a couple that like to kind of take it on a more Southern track, kind of heading towards the United States, especially that HWFI, that uh, gray line down there, that one takes it towards the Southeastern United States. It's obviously the most concerning track at this point because all the others take it out to sea. It kind of curves back around and it hangs out in the Atlantic where nobody's even at. So that would obviously be the best case scenario. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on in a moment and we're going to take a look at the one offshore of Africa as well. Then we're going to move on and take a look at some of those sea surface temperatures and then the intensity guidance for both of these systems. All right, now here is the one offshore of Africa. And as you can see, this one is expected to generally head kind of in a northwesterly direction. It's heading... Uh, pretty much to be on track with that one in the middle of the Atlantic. It should follow right behind that one. It could take a very similar track, although we thought that same thing about Henry, and obviously Henry took a bit of a different track, obviously, uh, than Fred, but we did originally think that that one would take a very similar track, and I guess for the most part in the beginning it did, but it really took a different turn afterwards. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at this sea surface temperature anomalies. And as you can see, the further north these storms go, the warmer the waters are, which is a little bit opposite of how it normally is. But uh, there in the middle of the Atlantic, waters are probably warmer than areas a little bit further south. Obviously, if you head towards Canada, they're going to be a lot colder, even with the above normal temperatures. But uh, regardless, there's some colder than normal conditions in the middle of the Atlantic, the southern middle north Atlantic. Oh my gosh, it's so confusing. Areas near the Caribbean and near the main development region, that's better. Uh, but that's because of how many tropical cyclones have moved over this region. And typically they kind of eat up some of the warm waters and bring some cooler waters. That's very typical with these systems. And I think the, the amount of activity we've been having lately has attributed uh, to this for sure. Uh, also, another thing to note, this is very random, but looking towards the fall and winter, this is looking like a very nice negative NAO setup with these extremely warm waters offshore of uh, Canada there and south of Greenland. That is a good sign for this upcoming winter. Here's the seven-day change, by the way, uh, and we see a lot of those blues going on. So you could tell things have cooled a lot uh, in, in the recent uh, couple of days and, and weeks or so. Now, in our Nino 3.4 index, this is very random, but we've headed more towards a neutral ENSO. Uh, we've not been able to break through into a uh, La Nina yet still, and we're heading towards the end of August, which is super interesting, obviously. We were expecting a La Nina, but it's struggling to get there for wintering snow lovers. In general, I think the more close to that neutral line we are, the better for you guys. So we're going to be watching that situation over the coming months, obviously. Invest 97L. This is the one in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, it does have potential, as you can see here, only two or three take it kind of in the more downtrend direction, taking it towards a weakening, weakening storm. The rest just take it straight towards Category 1, 2, and even 3 uh, as we head towards hours 156, hours 168. Uh, it's just still intensifying. So we're going to need to watch that one closely because that could be our next major hurricane if that is the case. The one offshore of Africa, it's a little less bullish here. We see uh, kind of half of them show it kind of staying a very weak uh, under tropical depression status. So just not even uh, very notable. Uh, but there is quite, I, I would say probably 75% of these take it towards tropical storm status. And one has it right on the fence there of that category one status. So this could increase over time, but really... It's hard to tell for certain that one in the middle of the Atlantic surely has the most potential at this point. Now, for today's confidence tab, we're at a five out of six. I feel pretty good about all of these storms. I feel like we kind of have a handle on what's going to happen. For the, for the most part, these two here, the main development region one and the one in the middle of the Atlantic, should stay over water for a very long time. We know that part. The one there in the Gulf should basically head west. It should head west. And we will watch what it does, but should it be heading towards Central America, Mexico, and maybe even Texas eventually. Uh, no comment of the day today because yesterday was our winter forecast, and I usually just don't even ask for a comment of the day on those. So, again, be sure to check that out. It's going to be on my channel. 
Uh, you can check that out today. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lord of the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J. Luke, Lego, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Balin, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be part of this very exciting patron entry of the day, do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.